My dear God's loving people, we are on the third Advent Sunday and realizing that we are inching closer to the feast of Christmas, we are called to rejoice. The third Sunday of Advent is called as Gaudete Sunday. Gaudete means to rejoice. Let's try to feel the joyous vibes of Christmas, the joy of our salvation. The first reading is taken from the third part of the book of prophet Isaiah. Now the people are already back to their homeland after being exiled in the land of Babylon and now trying to settle down and put things right. Amidst this, prophet Isaiah announces the good news of deliverance. He prophesizes the day of salvation and at this not only the people of Israel will rejoice, but the entire universe, the nature also will exult into joy. The responsorial psalm is the Magnificat of Mother Mary. It's a song of joy. The response is, my soul rejoices in my God. The theme of joy continues in the second reading too. St. Paul calls the people of Thessalonica to always rejoice in the Lord by giving thanks, by giving Him praise and blessing Him all the time. My dear God's people, once we realize that God has done so much for us in His Son, Jesus Christ, our heart automatically rises in adoration and in thanksgiving to God. And this leads to deep inner joy. To give thanks to God in all circumstances of life is the will of God for us, says St. Paul. This reading also contains practical suggestions for anyone who wishes to be a follower of God. St. Paul exhorts everyone to do good all the time and to avoid that which is evil. Our joy on this earth can never be complete. The fullness of joy is awaiting us at the coming or the second coming of Jesus Christ. And therefore we are to live a spotless life so that with him we may always rejoice and experience that complete joy. In the gospel passage, the evangelist John makes a difference between Jesus and John the Baptist. He says, Jesus is the eternal word. He is the son of God. Specially included in today's reading is that Jesus is the true light. And John the Baptist is only a witness to this true light. We need to notice this. In the gospel of St. John, that is in the fourth gospel, the picture of John the Baptist is different from that which is given by the synoptic gospels. John the evangelist eliminates all the references to his preaching about repentance and all the mention of him as the herald of the kingdom of God. He does not engage in water baptism although there are references to it. And what is not mentioned is one of the most important acts of John the Baptist in general that is the baptism of Jesus Christ. We don't find John the Baptist baptizing Jesus in the fourth gospel. When the Jewish leaders, especially the Pharisees, come to him, he is not found in a conflict situation. Whereas in the gospel of Matthew, we see that he calls them hypocrites, brood of vipers. He is the one who points to the Lamb of God and says, there is the Lamb of God. So the focus of the fourth evangelist regarding John's activity is not on his exhortation or on his preaching, but on his witnessing to Jesus Christ. Anyone who saw the crowds following John the Baptist would be tempted to think that he in fact was the Messiah. But John very openly and humbly confessed that he was not the Messiah. He actually pointed to the actual Messiah, the Word of God, the Lamb of God and the true light of the world, Jesus Christ. 
his one wish was that that Jesus should always increase and he himself should decrease. What a great weakness. What a great humility. Can we practice that? We may find it difficult because we always work to outdo somebody else. But today, John the Baptist teaches us that the most important person in our life is Jesus Christ. And that we need to make him shine wherever we go. His light should shine in our life. Having Jesus in our life and allowing him to shine in our life, through our life, will give us immense joy and gladness. My dear God's people, the Lord is about to come. Let's be joyful witnesses to Jesus Christ. May God bless you.